Zach, don't let him worry you. Zach, don't let him worry you. Don't let Lee psych you out, all right? Look, I'll fix your chromosomes for you, all right? <laughs> you just need to go take dominion over that sickness. That's what you need to do, doesn't he? He just needs to go home and take dominion over that sickness. That's what you do. Hey, go home and tell you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go home and take dominion over diarrhea. <laughs> Could you imagine standing in front of somebody and be like, I take dominion over diarrhea. I'm rebuking the spirit of diarrhea. You people need help, man. There ain't no spirit, man. You're just sick. <laughs> yeah, go take some charcoal, man. <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. I mean, it is, but it isn't. But it's kind of funny. I mean, when you think about it, I li I do enjoy mocking those false prophets, though. But anyway, we'll get into Todd Bentley again too on that, uh, and talk about him. I talked about him last week, a little bit, and there's there's more about that. But those guys are dangerous. What they're preaching is very dangerous. It's a mockery of the Bible. So anyway, all right. Well, we're going to talk about. The apostles, I don't know if we'll get to, oh man, did I bring that here? Let's see. I think I did. Let me see where my, oh, there it is. I don't think I'm going to get as far as I think tonight. I usually never do. But in case I do, I'll have this with me. Um, we're going to continue to talk about the effects of that church discipline and just what was happening after that. Uh, we talked about that the results, what it did, um, and let, we're going to talk about apostolic miracles, but we're going to, we're going to kind of, we're going to do a Bible study tonight a little bit and talk about signs and wonders, okay, and we're going to kind of narrow in on signs and wonders, that phrase, and then talk a little bit about wonders separately a little bit, but just to kind of show, because that's a phrase that's in Acts chapter 5 and verse number 12, and then 15 and 16, we're seeing the same thing here talked about, so I, it's important to understand that these things were done uh, as signs of an apostle. But these signs and wonders are always done by the movement of God for a purpose. They are not just like random, all right? They are not the way that, that, that it's being taught in the charismatic movement. It's not like that. Let's pray. Father, Lord, please help us as we look through the Bible and study this phrase all the way through to show and to prove what the Word of God says in the record that you have, Lord, not to believe feelings, emotional emotions, or things that stir us up outside of the Word of God, but Lord, that what we stir up inside of us is the Spirit of God, and that it agrees with the Word of God. Help us now, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so uh, Acts chapter 5 and verse number 12 says, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And then we skip down to verse number 15 in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least of the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Every one. Okay, so in this miraculous apostolic power that was given here, this apostolic authority and miracle that was given here, which is a power from God that was given, it was really an extension of what Jesus Christ did when he was here. And they were able to do that. If you remember right, when Jesus came, they were able, when Jesus came and he anointed them as prophets, that anointing did give them what? It gave them power. But what was it for? It was for a sign. That's why they're called signs. That's why they're called sign gifts. That's why we see, and they're called wonders. Why? Because they are out of the ordinary. They are not normal. But they are definitely traceable, seeable, recordable, right? Because they all are recordable. We see them here. They were recorded. And, and they weren't like some fancy thing that the charismatics do or, or some show they put on. It says Peter walked by and they were healed. It doesn't say Peter stood them up and was like, and like smacking him down and throwing his coat. It says his shadow, but it, Peter wasn't making a spectacle of himself. No, these guys make a spectacle of themselves, and there's no power. There isn't any real power. It's all a show. 
So, so we're going to study, we're going to look at those, we're going to look at a bunch of verses tonight uh, and study kind of signs and wonders a little bit and see what God says about them, okay? They show a special providence or work of God. That's the first thing I want you to understand. They show a special providence or a work of God. So when God is getting ready to do something, he does signs and wonders. He breaks the natural laws that that we are subject to right um let's let let's let's give an example of that uh who could give me an example of god breaking a natural law in the life of people in the bible that that we are subject to normally what's that when he moved the sun back right right parting of the red sea right can't be done by man it's against the laws, right, of nature that are set down for us to be able to move things. Living in a fish's belly for three days. Remember we talked to that, that lady, and she was like, well, I said, well, the, I, I said, scientists have proven that, that, a, fish can, uh, that, that a, a whale can swallow a human like that. That's, I mean, it's possible. Yeah, but they can't live for three days and three nights. So she didn't believe in the miracles of God, right? Uh, supernaturally, they can, though. If God breaks us. How about the, the, the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace? How about that? What, what laws of nature were broken, Brother Joshua? What, what, was the, what, what laws were broken for, the, for them to be able to walk into that fire? All kinds of things, right? It, you can't, you, fire will burn you up, right? Fire will destroy you. No, and it didn't even smell like, so what happened? My opinion is, is that God just kind of brought them into another dimension while they were right there. So it didn't affect them. It didn't phase them. Because he came walking in there, right? And where God is, the, and, and the Bible talks about, Jesus talks about how when we pass through the fire, he'll be with us, Right? Which is impossible. No, which is, yeah, which is impossible, but not with God. Because with God, all things are possible. 40 days. Right, which is not possible. Right, but with God, God breaking those natural laws, those are signs and those are wonders. That's what those are. So Deuteronomy 6.22, uh, we're going we're gonna to go there first, and we're going to see how God was calling a people out of Egypt. Sound familiar? Deuteronomy 6.22, and the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. So he says here that he's rehearsing, what is Deuteronomy? It's the re-giving of the law, right? So he's rehearsing the law. What happened? When they first left Egypt, they got the law. When they were getting ready to enter in the re-giving of the law, before Moses was dying and he was that old prophet that was going to shake his fist at them one last time before he was dead, right? Because <laughs> that's what he did. He said, because of you, I ain't going in here, right? That's what he said. I don't get to go in because of your rebellion, Sort of his too, but but <laughs> but they provoked him, right? They provoked him, but but anyway. So Moses, he's rehearsing the law before they go into the land. Why? Because all those children that grew up needed to hear it. They had to sit there and they had to hear the law again before they entered into the land, right? But but the miracles, Deuteronomy is recording the signs and wonders that God did. Why? Okay, because he said Moses said, look. Israel's not going to believe me if I come to them and say, God sent me there. These people have been in captivity for so long. They're not going to believe it. And what does the Bible say about the Jews? They seek a sign. Right? They seek a sign. So, so here's what happened. They saw, God said, I'm going to do signs and wonders to show a new dispensation, a new dispensing of how I deal with people. Now, people run from that word and get very scared of that word because of Darby and because of all that. But that's a Bible word. And it's been around for longer than Darby or any of those other losers that are, that, that are gone or any of those other people that, that faked anything and, and, and put false doctrine to it or whatever. So it is real. God dispensed, and that's what God did here. That's how he did it, right? Now, Joshua chapter 3, turn there. You're going to be all over your Bible tonight. You're not going to be in one place. 
It'll be all over because we're studying something word for word here. So we got to go through word for word, and we got to do that. We need more Bible in us, amen? It'll help us. It's good for you. Good for you. You need it. I need it. We get enough junk in us, don't we? Got enough of us in us. The more God you get in you, the less of you you'll have in you. Amen? Better off you'll be. That's for sure. Man, I, you ever get sick and tired of thinking about yourself? Man, I'm sick and tired of thinking about me. I, we need to think about God. Joshua chapter 3, verse number 5. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Listen, that's a good thing for you and I to do. We ought to, we ought to remember that God wants to do wonders among us too. Now, he might not let the, uh, the sun stand still, or he might not do some of those things, but there's definitely some wonders in our life that God wants to do for us if we would sanctify ourselves. And remember to sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always, the Bible says. So we're to sanctify the Lord in our hearts that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That's not any different for you and I if we'll sanctify ourselves, if we'll do what God has called us to do, and we'll look in God's Word, and we'll ask God to show us wonders. You ever ask God to show you anything? You know what? We're some proud, we're some proud sorry saps sometimes, aren't we? We don't even ask God. Before we get into His book, we don't even ask Him to show us anything. We think we got it all figured out, don't we? So we don't even ask God to show us anything. We don't pray and ask God, God, would you reveal something to me in your Word today? That only you would show me. Amen. I hope some of you ladies did that Proverbs 31 challenge. I hope some of you did. And if you didn't, you could do it this month. Amen. That's the best part about the Bible. You can keep going. Amen. So why don't you do it this month if you didn't do it last month? If you fell off sometime, you say, well, I didn't get it every day. Well, that's okay. Get it today then. Start today. Amen? I want to encourage you to do that and take some thoughts and ask God to teach you something about some of those verses. And ask him. He'll minister to your soul. He'll give you what you need. He'll feed you. He'll give you what you need. Amen? Say, but I failed. Oh, that's why you have a Savior. That's, that's why you have a Savior. <laughs> right? Because you fail. Because I fail. That's why we have a Savior. If God was looking for something perfect, he sure wouldn't have grabbed you and me. Right? He wouldn't have grabbed you and I, would he have? Right. But God's merciful. See, I don't feel like I have much of his mercy right now. Well, you may not feel it, but you got it. Because you're still breathing. So you got it. Amen? You're still standing. You're still moving. You got it. Amen? He said, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. God was going to do something amazing. He was going to defeat all their enemies. I like that. Psalm 78, 11. Talking about wonders. We're going to talk about signs and wonders, but here we're talking about wonders here. Psalm 78, 11. And forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the, in the field of Zoan. Okay, I, I want to ask you a question. Because this one hits home for me. I, I think I can identify with this verse. Can you? I can. The first part. <laughs> and forget his works and his wonders. You ever forget what God's done for you? I have. I have. Peter talked about it many times. That's why Peter and Paul was always telling us to stir it up, stir up the gift that is in you. Remember, 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 remember over and over again. Why? Because you forget so easy. How can we never forget any bad thing that ever happens to us, but we always forget all the good things? You ever do that? Man, I bet you remember every time your husband said something to you he shouldn't have said. Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you're laughing at me. Because <laughs> you know it's true. Never forget that. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. But you forgot that, right? But you don't remember all the good things he ever said, do you? You forget those. Or maybe you guys don't say enough good things. <laughs> you better, better get busy. But uh, Right? But you forget, right? We're like that, aren't we? You Listen, you forget what other people do for you, the good things that other people do for you. You forget that sometimes over one thing. Right? And you forget all the good things. That's human nature. We focus on the bad, the negative. We have to fight it. We overemphasize the negative. Don't we? Amen. Look at that. It, sa it says here that he forget they forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. You and I are guilty of that. We've got to be careful about that. Over a little bit of heartache and pain and suffering or doubts and fears or, or anxiety or whatever it is, we forget the entire record of our lives, of everything good God has ever done for us. And that one tragedy that we have right there, this one thing that we're facing, we are so temporally focused on that we can't see anything else. We get tunnel vision. And we forget all that God's done for us. All the wonders. Didn't Elijah do that? He did it. And he saw marvelous things. He saw things that you and I will never see with our eyes, more than likely. But what did he do? So he ran, man. As soon as he saw it, he forgot all about it. He forgot all about it. That's how we are. That's how the flesh is. That's why we've got to walk in the Spirit and we've got to rehearse the things of God. You know one thing I've noticed when I'm down a lot? One thing I've noticed is that I don't praise God like I should. I catch myself doing that. And I think about it sometimes, and that's the Holy Spirit reminding me. You know all the negative stuff? That's not the Holy Ghost. That's the devil. That's your own flesh. But when God says, you know, when's the last time you praised me? Ooh. Man, I've been feeling so down and so discouraged and so kicked and everything else. When is the last time I praised God? Well, if you can't remember, friend, it's been way too long. Because it ought to be coming out of your mouth every hour. You'll find out that'll change your attitude. You know the, the Patch the Pirate song, they sing this grat attitude, gratitude, or something like that? Yeah, that one. I think some big boys and girls need to sing that. Right? My kids run around singing that song. I'm like, man. Yeah. That's true. Right? It's true. This is supposed to be about signs and wonders and very pretty and nice today. I don't know what happened. It's just it's turned into a scathing rebuke of your own pastor to himself. But it's great. But hey, as long as it's helping you too, that'll work. How about Job chapter 9, verse number 10? At this rate, it'll take us till 12, but we'll get through it. I only have like 400 verses here. Which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. That's God. Psalm 77, 11, and verse 12. I'll give you a, ch a chance to get there since I've already got all mine printed out here. I just look like I'm faster than you, but I'm really not. I just, I just print them all out or type them all out on here, so I already have them. Psalm 77, 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Hmm. Now, why do you suppose David had to do that? He said, I'll remember the works of the Lord. Well, I mean, you ever, you ever, yeah, he doubted God's providence. He doubted God's goodness to him. He doubted a lot of things. Lord, you just cast me off. I'm done. Yeah, everything's happening. Psalm 7, I will remember the works of the Lord. Do you know that you and I have to actively force ourselves to do that? It's easy for us to think about nonsense. It just kind of floats around our brains. It's just like, like you can just like, it's like, it's like grabbing it in a cloud. It's just up there. You're like, woo, there it is, right? It just floats in your brain. Stu F what's that's the real eye cloud, yeah, right? It just floats in your brain, doesn't it? Nonsense or negativity. It just floats in your brain, right? 
I have to actively remember. That's why we're commanded to. Because we have to, because we have flesh. And there's a war. There's a battle. And it rages. Psalm 77, 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. That means I'm going to go through God's word. And I'm going to remember his wonders and all that he's done. You know, rehearsing the wonders of God will help you. It'll grow your faith. The next verse. Yeah, I've got it there. 12. I will meditate also of all thy work. But there's another one. Let's stop there for a second. I will meditate also of all thy work. You mean not on all the negative bad stuff? No, I will meditate on thy work. This is a conscientious decision that I have to make myself do. You know, you ever get sometimes in your Christian life where you just think stuff's supposed to be automatic? I do. I get that way in my brain sometimes where things are just supposed to be working right. Like I'm just supposed to be spiritual and it's just supposed to be working right. And you forget, hey, you didn't get, you didn't get there by that way. I mean, as a Christian growing. Obviously, God does all the work when you're saved. But the point is that you didn't get there by laying off. You got there by stepping on the gas, right? That's right. The kingdom, they take it by violence. They take it, the violent take it by force. Man, you can be such a pansy sometime in your mind, can't you? It's just such a whipped puppy that's like being whipped around. You ever notice that? I have to, I have to stop myself and I notice it that I'm not thinking about the things that I'm supposed to, but I'm allowing myself to be beat up and destroyed. I'm like, why am I doing that? Because I'm not doing this. Because if I'm doing this, I'm not doing that. See how that works? Yeah, but it's not easy to do this. Well, I know, but it's still a command, and you still have to do it. And the more you do this, the better it'll be. Does that make sense? I will remember the works of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. That means I'm going to talk about all that God has done. I'm going to testify of all that God has done for me. I'm going to rehearse those things, and I'm going to talk about those things. All God's wonders. Psalm 78, 11, turn there. Oh, I already did that one, didn't I? I had that twice. That was so good you needed it twice. Psalm 88, 10. Yeah, we did it already. Did I? No, I did it before that. Yeah, up up to. I, I, I recorded it twice for quality assurance. Well, I'm kind of weird. I'm not always in order in my brain. <laughs> Psalm 88.10. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Selah. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? And thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? Sounds like somebody is going through something. Well, how's his wonders going to be known in the dark? By you. Right? Right? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. I know what that's like. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me. And mine acquaintance into darkness. Job was go, or uh, David was going through some things. That might be Asaph too, at that point. But it could be David. But it doesn't matter. The psalmist, whoever it was at that point, was going through some things, and he felt very cut off from everyone. You ever feel that way? You be in a room full of people and feel alone. Yep. Or in a room full of people and want to be alone. I've been there before. 
<laughs> you ever been there, Brother Joshua? <laughs> yep. Especially when you're all sick. I just, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Especially my kids are puking and everything. <laughs> I need to be alone now. <laughs> ah, thank God for mothers. Man, I'm telling you. Well, without one, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> right, Giannis? <laughs> that's that's very true. That's that's so basic, right? That's so basic. Anyway. Psalm 95 5. Let's go there. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders. The heavens praise his wonders. O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? Look at this. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. Greatly to be feared. That should have been Psalm 95, 5, but I could have written down the wrong chapter. It's very possible. What's that? Was it 89, 5? Must be dyslexic. God is greatly to be feared, verse number 7, in the assembly of the saints, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. Psalm 96, 1. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord, all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. By the way, that's what you do when you preach. Do you know that? When we hand out gospel tracts and we go preach, we declare his glory among the heathen. His wonders among all people. Salvation is a, is a walking wonder. That the Lord would save us, change us, and make us new creatures. Right? It is the greatest miracle. It's the greatest sign or wonder you could ever see in your life. And there's so much evidence for it in the lives of the saints. So much evidence of God's hand in their life and in their heart. It is the greatest sign and wonder. Right? Right? There's, nothing, there's no tra tract better than a Christian that is sold out to God. It's the best tract you'll ever read. Amen? One that has been supernaturally changed by the Spirit of God. One that came from sin to the Savior. One that came from a life of hell to a life of righteousness in Christ. That's only God. Only God can do that. That's a wonder that only God can do. And that's the wonder that we preach among the heathen. That's the ones that we lift up and we tell, we tell them of the one that saves. There's no greater wonder than that. Right? For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Psalm 107, verse 23. I like this one. This one talks about some wonders, but it also talks about some trials. It is a picture of the trials of, of the Christian life. And it's a picture of God's servants. It's a picture of, of God's preachers, too, as well in the battle, on the front lines of battle. Psalm 107, verse 23. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters. I'm telling you, when God calls a man to preach... When he saves him, calls him, and sends him out to do his work, it's great waters. He's doing business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. I've seen God do some amazing things. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. I've been there. I've been there. Looking at the storm, melts you, right? God does that on purpose. He allows it to happen. Says they reel to and fro. <laughs> I've been there too. I know what that means now more than I ever did, right? They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man, trying to get their footing. Mm -hmm. and are at their wit's end. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. God, I, I'm done. I, don't have, I, I can't do anything. I don't know what to do. 
every time, right at the tip of it, right at the wit's end of it, and it don't take long for me, but right when I'm there, right at the end of that, that's when the Lord, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And he bringeth them out of their distresses. He delivers them. You know what that word distress means? We're going to do some Bible studies on some of these words. Distresses. We're going to talk about some of these words as they relate to depression in the Bible. One of those words is distresses. One of those words is dismayed. He tells them, he tells Joshua, says, Be not dismayed. Be thou strong and very courageous. Be not dismayed. You know what dismayed means? It means distressed, disoriented. It means without courage. It means that all of your courage is gone and taken from you. That's what that means. That's what it means to be dismayed. See, there's a lot of words in the Bible that deal with depression and discouragement and anxiety and all those things, but I haven't heard a lot of preachers really bring them out. Now, some of them probably just don't want to admit that they've ever been through it. Older preachers like Spurgeon and men like that, men from those times, the Puritans, Old Baptists, those people. But a lot of these from the last 30, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, they don't talk about that stuff. Why? Because you can't let your people know you're actually human. I mean, you have to walk around like there's nothing wrong with you all the time. Right? I can't do that. <laughs> I just, I can't do that. First of all, I can't lie like that. Second of all, it wouldn't be true. It w- I couldn't live like that because it's not right. It's not, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes you're going to have some trials. And you know what? There's seasons of joy and there's seasons of sorrow. I'm looking forward to the seasons of joy. I know they're going to come. I'm looking forward to them. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as eagles, right? They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That eagle sits in the sun until his wings grow so he can fly. Bask in the sun for a while. Amen. But he says here that, um, let's see, we're at, uh, where were we at here? 28. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. That's a wonder right there. That God takes a man like that and put, takes him through all of those trials and all of those heartaches and all those pain and all of those, that suffering and all those trials and and to the end of himself, to bring him to the end of himself, to teach him to trust in the Lord. And that's what he does to you, too. And you may be going through some of those great waters, too. You may get discouraged or depressed and down and all those things. And you may get to that point. But you know what? God will lift you up out of that. He'll lift you out of that. He'll bring you through that. He might let you do some surfing for a while out there. Right? But eventually, he'll calm the storm. Amen? Amen? Eventually, it's a test of faith, and we have to continue to stay in the storm, right in the eye of it. Right in the eye of it. Amen? Yeah, amen. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Psalm 136, verse 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. That's the chapter, his mercy endureth forever, like almost every verse. You you think the psalmist was trying to get us to remember something? That when God gives his mercy in the light, it doesn't change in the dark. When, when, you, when, you don't feel, when you don't feel as if you're as close to God, when you don't have as much communion with God, or when you believe that there's, you know, that, that God is hiding his face, or that God is dealing with you, and, the, and that you're, there's, his mercy endureth forever. It's still there. It's still there. He's still there. Amen? He changes not. Amen? 
You know why God tells us to fear not so much? Right, because we have a lot of fear. So he tells us to fear not. Over and over again, he says, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Right? <laughs> fear not, thou worm. <laughs> right? That's what he said. Jacob, thou worm. Amen. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm glad I thought of that. Praise the Lord. That's going to be a good verse for you. It's his ordination verse. Fear not, Jacob, thou <laughs> Fear not, Jacob, thou worm. <laughs> I shouldn't feel this good doing that, but that <laughs> Fear not, thou Jacob. Jacob, thou worm. <laughs> Let me punch you in the hollow of your thigh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But you know what? That's what he said to him. He said, you know, fear not. Yeah, I know you're a little worm, but I'll be with you. Right? Amen? That's a good, that's a promise. You ever feel that low? I do sometimes. It's the conscience. Yeah, it's the mind. Mm -hmm. And he said, fear not. I will be with you. Amen? I, I, have preached, I have a sermon that I put together on Isaiah 43 that I'm going to preach on that sometime. Okay, so Nehemiah chapter 9, verse number 10. We're through the Old Testament. Hope nobody's sleepy. Actually, we're not through the Old Testament yet. Sorry. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse number 10. And show his signs and wonders upon Pharaoh and on all his servants and on all the people of his land. For thou knowest that they dealt proudly against them. So didst thou get thee a name as it is this day. And thou didst divide the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on the dry land. And their persecutors, thou threwest into the deeps as a stone in the mighty waters. Now, here's, here's uh, Nehemiah reminding God of his works. You know, that's a good way to pray, is to remind God of his works. You don't have to remind him of what you've done. You can remind him what he's done. Amen? He already knows what you've done. Right? He already knows what we've done. I mean, we can confess our sins, and we ought to confess our sins. Right? But God already knows what you've done. You remind him what he, he's done. That's what Moses did. God was said to Moses, get out of my way, Moses. I'm going to kill them all. God said, I'm going to kill all your people. Moses said, Lord, they're your people. <laughs> they're not mine, God. They're yours. <laughs> Wilt thou destroy thy people? Moses reminded him of his works. And Nehemiah's reminding him, God, you brought them all the way out of Egypt. Moses said that too. God, you brought them with signs and wonders out of Egypt. And if they die in this desert, what's all these people going to say? What are these heathen going to say? Right? That brings glory to God. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse number 20, which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day, and in Israel, and among other men, and has made thee a name as it has this day, and has brought forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and with wonders, with a strong hand, with a stretched out arm, and with great terror. It was amazing, wasn't it? But it's just as amazing when God brings his people out of the world. Daniel chapter 4. How about this? Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwelt in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. Well, there's a change. You're all going to die. <laughs> right? That's what it seems like before. That's what he was like before. You're all going to die. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in, the, in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders. Look at this. I thought it good. Boy, I wish we would think it good. Right? 
I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm thinking of Nebuchadnezzar because he's walking in his, in, his, in his castle really proud. You all see this kingdom which I have built. And the angel from heaven, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, did you ever mess up? <laughs> <laughs> he like heard the voice from heaven, the angel of heaven, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, right? And boom, he was gone. He lost his mind just like that. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, languages that dwell on the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Right? So, man, he's like, God took his mind from him. Right? He restored it, too. He restored it to him. Amen? God can do that. Right? When he gave God the glory, yeah. How great are his signs. Daniel 6.26. Here's another king. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. In his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So here's a king that says, you know what? We're going to sign this decree and get this taken care of right now. Because God, look, but look what it says God does. He delivers, he rescues, and he works. Signs and wonders in heaven and earth. No, that was uh, Darius, yeah, and then Cyrus later. The yeah, that would have been, if that was Darius, yeah. I think, no, 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 Darius, I think it was, well, Darius, one of the kings signed it. Cyrus signed one. Darius signed one. And then there was like this where nobody did anything for a while. Yeah, the king in between those two. Yeah, so Darius did sign it, though. Yeah. Uh, Daniel 6.26 here. Yeah, are you, okay, Dan, that's what he's talking about here. That God shut the mouth of uh, from the who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. By the way, that's devils too. That's a picture of devils. Satan is that roaring lion, right? As a roaring lion. Anyway, so Matthew chapter twenty-four. Let's go there. Matthew chapter twenty-four. Now we're going to get into these signs and wonders of the New Testament here. Matthew twenty-four twenty-four. even at this time period of deception that's going to come across the whole earth in Matthew 24, 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. So Jesus is announcing this, that they are going to do this. They're going to have power to do it. Where do they get their power from? Well, they come after the working of Satan, but who allows it though? God does. God allows it. Why? Because he's changing things again. This is at what? The sixth seal. This is when things start to change. This is when the Antichrist is revealed. Right? This is when things start to happen. This is when God is showing a difference, that something different is going to take place. Right? For there shall rise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, and so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Look, if you don't think that's possible, that without the power of God, you'd be deceived, I'll tell you something. It is possible for you and I to be deceived. I can tell you firsthand I've been deceived by people. And it is possible to be deceived. It is possible for us to be spiritually deceived. But you know what? Only to a point. And then God reveals the truth. Amen. And thank God for it. And he reveals the truth. And that's what God does. That's why the elect will not be fooled, because God reveals the truth to them. Amen? He reveals it through his word. 
Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. So Mark chapter 13, turn there because it talks about the same time period. Mark chapter 13, verse number 22, for false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders. But what is the purpose of their signs and wonders? Look what it says. To seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. That's the purpose. But they don't get away with it. So most of your charismatics, oh, they're definitely going to fall in the line. Yes. Exactly. The difference is one is to seduce, and that's what they're going to do. But see, they're going to show those signs and wonders to seduce Israel and to seduce people that are like that. And that seducing, that seduction of Israel is going to go all the way up to a point. A lot are going to be slaughtered and killed. And then the other, the remnant that's there is going to be like, when they, t when they tell them, to when the people make that image and they're like, you all have to bow down, that's when like a third of them are going to be like, uh-uh. Why? Because they're going to remember the commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. They're going to remember that command. It's going to stick in their minds, right? Because God's going to reveal it to them through his word. And they're going to, they're going to remember his word, right? For false Christ and false prophets shall arise. Okay, that's Mark 13, to seduce if were possible. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, after that tribulation, so here it is again. Here's going to be the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. What is that? A lot of things. A lot of things. The heavens are going to look like one big war zone of activity. I believe literal stars are going to fall and I believe angels are going to fall. Right before your eyes, if we're here anyway. If we're not all dead, but anyway. <laughs> but I believe that's what's going to happen. See, does that bother you? Not really, because he said it. I'm going to be like, well, there it is. He said it was going to happen right there. Here it comes. Look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Right? And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. When is that? After the tribulation, that tribulation. What else is it after? The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. A lot of people want that to be, you know, want to say that that's pre-trib. Pastor Mike just did a great, study on the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I don't know if you've seen that yet, but that the angel of, of that, that's Jesus that, that's talking about there. Man, he gets some pretty good proof for it. I, I think he's right. That angel that appears is Jesus. And, and at the time period of when that is, which is after the tribulations, after the sixth seal, it's after those things take place. It's pretty interesting, actually. It's called the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's good. Amen. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. These times, they are marked with deception, right? The same time period. So, so Matthew says false prophets. Mark says seduce. And then we have 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. See, the end of the age is not marked with, with Joel's army being God's people that are going to be like super soldiers, super satanic soldiers, loser by day. Anyway, they're, 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 they're <laughs> I've met a lot of those, but they're, they're not, that's not what the Bible's talking about. It's talking about Satan's workers are going to be like that. Because remember, they're not going to be able to, they're not going to die. There's a time period where they can't die. They're invincible. They're going to wish they were dead. Right? 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 1 talks about those signs and wonders again. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. I, I want to ask you a question. Do you think this is here because it's not possible for you to be shaken in mind or for you to be troubled by spirit? What does the Bible say about that? Try the spirits, whether they are of God. Did you know, Jacob, that every thought that goes into your head is not from God? <laughs> Did you know that every fearful, anxious thing that you have come through, did you know that's not from God? So what am I supposed to do with that? I'm supposed to cast it down. Why? It's exalting itself against the knowledge of God. We're going to talk about that maybe Sunday, so I'm not going to park there right now, but I, I want to help you with that on Sunday. All right? That you be soon not shaken in mind. Shaken, worried, fearful, anxious. Right? Or be troubled. That's a troubled mind. Either by spirit or by word. Right? Or by letter as from us. Oh, they found the lost gospel of Thomas. Well, good for them. So, and it says something totally different. Or they found the lost gospel of so-and-so. And it says, well, I don't care what it says. It could say monkeys flying. I don't care what it says. I don't care what it says. If it don't say what this says, it's trash. Amen. That's right. If it don't. If it don't say what this says, if it speaks against this, then it ought to go in the trash. Amen. That's the same thing with your thoughts. If they speak against this, they ought to go in the trash. Amen. That's right. Tell them, buddy. They, they, they ought to, they, you ought not accept anything that preaches different than what this book does. Amen. Okay, here we go. By letter. Be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter is from us. Boy, there's a lot of ways you can be troubled, ain't there? I think some days I can be troubled by all of it. <laughs> As that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come. This is very clear. This is very clear right here. Like, I don't see how anybody... Look, this is what made me not be pre-trib anymore right here. This, this one thing right here was like, okay, I'm done. I can't be that. Why? Just because that what that plainly says right there, I cannot, I, I can't do that. Like, I can't, just this, if there was nothing else, and it was just this, I'd be like, well, I, I can't, this is just like plain. This is plain. Like, he's telling you, like, plainly, like, you can't get it any plainer, right? He says this, he says, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except, so that day can't come, except, there come a falling away first. That's an apostasy. Are we seeing it? We're seeing the foreshadows of it, right? Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. Now, I don't know how these people do this, but they're like, well, that, that's not a real man. But it says it's a man. It says it's a man. And it also says he's the son of perdition. Which gets into some weird stuff. A.W. Pink believes that it's Judas Iscariot's going to come up out of the pit. Now, Pastor Hoggard says something really interesting about where the beast comes from. He comes up out of the pit. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't know. I've thought about that theory, and I've, I, I'm i telling you, it, it moves me in that direction, but I won't state anything on it because God didn't say we should. So... You know, I'm, I'm just saying it. It's interesting. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who is he? Who, who he, he is who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Right? That's what he does. Or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 
Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him, whose coming is after, look at this, is after the working of Satan. That's who his coming is after the working of. So Satan works this plan out. But God is in charge of it all still. Now, he's not, God, again, God is not forcing these people to do anything. He's letting them act in their own depravity, right? But their own depravity works the will of God. Tell me how that works. I can't. I just know God, that's how it works. Amen? Amen. And there's personal responsibility, and there's God's sovereignty, and I believe in both of them. Amen. I do believe in both of them. But look what it says here. It's after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. All power, all signs, all lying wonders. So the signs are real, but the wonders are lies. I want you to think about something here that not, not very many people are talking about right now, but it kind of it bothers me a lot. It bothers me a whole lot. Like, I think we're all going to hang because of it. That's the, <laughs> but that's fine. If we do, we do. All right? But here's what it is. It's called, the, it's called deep fake. You know what that is? You know what deep fake is? Okay. Deep fake are videos that look so real that you can't tell the difference between a real and a fake one so they could put you they could make a video of you they can put it digitally put it on a screen and it's you doing it so if somebody wanted to frame you or somebody wanted to turn you into some kind of criminal or some kind of pervert or some kind of whatever then they could make a deeply fake video of you and it's not even you now what do you think that is? Yes. And what, what, is that, what is that a sign of? All deceiving. Deceit. All of it. And they're saying that, they're, that, that even their AI bots are not able to detect whether it's real or not. It's called deep fake. What will you know? It's and, and but here's the kicker for you. I got another one for you. Here's an even better one. How do we know we haven't already seen them? Keep your eyes on the prize, because <laughs> it's gonna get real squirrely. You're not gonna be able to trust your feelings and emotions. I think God's testing us all right now with all that. Amen? Teaching us and training us not to trust in our emotions or ourselves or anything like that, but you trust in the written word of God, and you stop listening to your feelings and everything else, and you trust God and him alone. You trust his word, what it says, and you believe it, and you hide it in your heart, and you don't believe anything else because that's what's going to make the difference. And you've got to learn it, and you've got to lump it and like it. Do it. Amen. You don't got time to sit around and whine about it. You got to do it. You got to get believe in God's word and you got to get your heart into it and put your life into it. Put your heart into it and study to show yourself approved unto God and learn that book. Learn it. Be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked with the shield of faith, with the word of God, the sword of the spirit. Right? What does that tell you, friend? It tells you that you and I cannot believe everything we see. That's one of our senses. We can believe what we read in God's word because it's absolute. But we can't believe what we see or what we feel. We got to believe what he said. Go ahead. But blessed are they which that do not see. Right. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things what? Not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Right? And they saw, and so will you. Right? No, Abraham never, he died waiting for the promise. Amen? So what I'm telling you is, is that that's the times we're in. I'm going to have to talk about that again sometime, but explain it to you. But look what it says here. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonder. He's going to come and say, I'm Christ. I'm the Messiah. I'm the one you've been waiting for. Is Hoggard right? Is it going to be through the aliens? Ancient astronaut theory? Come down in that ship and be like, we're home, we're back. We populated the earth. We were we started it all. Oh, you guys got cancer while we're gone? Okay, we'll heal that. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of the ascended masters, a false Christ, a false prophet. But look what they come with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Look at this. So it's after the signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. But you've already received the gospel. You know who Jesus is. It's the one here. He's, this is the one. The one found in this book. That's the one of the Bible. That's the, that's the God of the Bible. That's Jesus. Amen. That's Jesus. The written word of God, right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That Jesus. And with all the seeds of unrighteousness and that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So the times are marked with delusion, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's their pleasure, is unrighteousness. They're not children of God. Those who believe the truth don't pleasure in unrighteousness. You see that? Because then as your mind, well, what if I, how do I know that I, I was that person? You start doubting, you say, well, look what it says here. They had pleasure in unrighteousness. God's children don't have pleasure in unrighteousness. We don't, we can't have fun in sin long term. It's not very fun. It doesn't last very long. When you sin against God, it don't feel very good. Right? There's no pleasure in it like it was when you were lost. And you keep yourself far from it. You don't want anything to do with it. Even if you're tempted by it, you hate the temptation of it. You hate even the temptation of it. Amen? You get to the point that you hate the temptation of it. Amen? That's the work of God. What's that? Amen. You know, the more failings that you see in your body, in your mind, in your heart, you know what that should make you remember? In heaven, we're not going to have any of that. We love this life way too much. That's why God has to allow afflictions. We'd never want to go to heaven if we didn't have any afflictions. Would we? If our bodies never got old, if we never, if we never grew old, if we never, if we never had failings in our minds and our hearts, if we never had fear, if we never had physical ailments, would we ever, would we ever want to go to heaven? Honestly. Right. That's what the devil's offering. But we'd live an imperfect life here. It's not possible to live forever here. Right? Yeah. Okay, Revelation 13. Oh, my goodness. We're never going to get done. i got to stop. Revelation 13. Verse number 13. And he doeth great wonders. There it is. And he doeth great wonders. Who's doing them? So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now, why does he do that? Who knows why he does that? Thank you. That's it. Because Elijah called down fire from heaven. See? 
this is really a prophet of God. He's the false prophet. He calls down fire from heaven. So what are people looking for? What are people hungry for? Well, if you show me proof, if you show me a sign, they're going to get it. They're going to get a sign, and they're going to believe it. We're going to see it and be like, "Uh uh-uh, that's a devil. Because we already have it. We got the book. We already know what it says. Revelation, he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So his powers are used to deceive. You know, I really think God is, again, God is just using all the trials of our lives right now to train us that you trust in my word alone. My spirit works with my word. And don't you believe anything else? Amen. And he seeth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound, had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Man, that is just going to be some weird stuff. They're going to have this, like, beast sitting there. And I'm telling you, that's what they're waiting for, is the power to be able to do that. That's what AI, that's the missing link. That's why it's probably this alien conspiracy is probably a good... Personally, I think it's going to be whatever they want it to be. Because that's how Satan operates. Right. Right. That's the God they want that loves everybody, that gives you whatever you want. Right? Amen. Jesus said this in John 4, 48. He said, then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. You and I have to be careful about that. God doesn't have to prove himself. He already did that by sending his son to save our soul. And when he saved you, he proved to you everything. You just have to trust him. Right? We would chide the charismatics for waiting for signs and wonders from God, but don't we feel sometimes that we need the very same thing? Do we not look for signs of comfortable feelings and for our senses to be aroused in order that we can be comfortable in the Lord? We look for outward signs or inward feelings of wonder. Right? We have to trust the Lord Jesus Christ here regardless of how we feel, how our frames are, how our feelings are. We look for no sign. But this, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, for he trusteth in thee. It doesn't say he will keep us in perfect peace if our mind is stayed on our trial or our fears or our doubts. It's that if our mind is stayed on him, right? When God comforts us through dark times and darkness, he says, let him stay upon his God, not stay upon his darkness. Right? Sometimes we stay upon the darkness, and we're not looking unto Jesus, but we're looking at the the trial, the dark. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That's not tested until it's tested, (laughs) is it? That's not tested until you're tested. All your care. Every care you have, cast it upon him. 
He is well able to secure you. Acts 4.30, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. We talked about that verse before. Acts 14.1, and it came to pass in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude both of Jews and also of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. So signs and wonders of an apostle were done there, but they couldn't accept it, some of them. Romans fifteen nineteen. Paul talks about signs and wonders through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Paul said he was an apostle, and he fully preached the gospel of Christ with signs and wonders because he was an apostle. That's why. Hebrews 2.1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. You mean it's possible for you to let some things slip? Right? Is it? It's possible for you to let some things slip? Oh, yeah. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a full recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. So, Jacob, that means that you and I can't command the chromosomes, uh, command power over chromosomes in somebody's head, right? We, We can't do that, right? I take dominion over chromosomes. Right? We can't be like Kenneth Copeland and do that. Right? Or like those guys that stand up those charismatic meetings. I take dominion over all devils here. And all, and all werewolves and Bigfoots and werewolves, I take dominion over the ball. And I set up this, well, how high was that wall? 200 foot flaming wall to keep all the devils out. Anyway, that's not real. No, but these were signs of an apostle. Okay, they were special signs that only the apostles did. And by the way, the, the, the apostles' miracles were done, but the apostles' miracles were what? They were, they were universal and they were complete. Nobody, nobody was walking around that never got healed that were supposed to be healed. They didn't walk away from somebody's wheelchair, or walk away from somebody that not walk it and be like, you're healed. It'll take a few days, though. You can get back to me. Right? Like, like, yeah, nobody died in the hospital. Like, four people died in Benny Hinn's meeting in Nigeria. They left the hospital to be healed by Benny Hinn. Four people, and they died in his meeting. Mm-hmm. The physicians, yeah. So anyway, but those miracles didn't happen like that. Those were true signs and wonders, and they were accomplished right away. They were seen, right, right away. Anyway, so that's a study on, a little study on signs and, and signs and wonders in the Bible. And it shows you when God is doing them and how he's doing them. This is the completed revelation. There's no more that needs to be, that needs to be given to us. It's like when these people say they have a word of knowledge or something like that. Well, you got a word of, I got a word of knowledge too. It comes from here. If my word of knowledge don't come from here, then you shouldn't listen to it. Because you can get knowledge from devils too. Eve got some knowledge from Satan and it didn't work out well for all of us. We ought to learn our lesson from that. Right? Right? Didn't work out great for, for Adam either. All right. Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Uh, Thank you that we can go through it, Lord, and study it. Help us to live it every day. And help us to trust you, Lord, no matter what we feel, no matter what's going on in our lives. Help us to trust you by faith. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen.